You are God's idea. Your days on earth are for a purpose. Your life may not make sense to you, but that is okay because you are not to do life alone. God has some information about your life that he wants you to depend on him for. Hey, gifted podcast listener, I greet you with Jesus joy. It's a pleasure to serve you all. You will finish well in Jesus name. Now it's time for the daily word from Pastor Kwame. My name is Steph and have a wonderful day. The scripture says rejoice and again I say rejoice. And I believe that it means that uh, you have to understand the reason why you have to rejoice and rehearse those reasons because our human emotions can play tricks on us and sometimes can take us to places where we find it very difficult to rejoice but always begin to find strength in the things that God has said and the things that he has done before and put the two together and know that he will do it again let me pray with you on today father we thank you we give you praise and glory for a new week We surrender to your leadership. We surrender to your lordship. I pray for everybody who is not doing well physically, that your healing strength will begin to release uh, from heaven upon us as never before. And I declare in the name of Jesus that something supernatural will affect your body for strength to come. I pray for those who are emotionally, psychologically not stable, that the Holy Spirit himself will stabilize you. I pray that you have an amazing week in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I lift up your family, your children. I lift up your, your very life and that you're going out and you're coming in. May your vehicle be anointed this week. Those who work from home, may there be productivity. I pray for those who need clients, may God connect you. You will have a sale this week. In the name of Jesus, God will open a door for you. You will make profit this week. You will also overcome this week the things that seek to overcome you. We thank you, Lord, that you are ans- your prayer answering God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God, amen, amen. I'm always excited to bring you the word of God. Um, the flower fades, the leaves wither, but the word abides forever. Praise the Lord. And I've gotten back behind the camera, so definitely I'm going to do one of the things I promised, which is the, the inner healing um, video series for your personal inner healing session. I'm going to try my best and get it done, amen. Um, so today's verse is amazing. So what I want to share with you on this Monday is a little bit of the importance of in-depth Bible study, the importance of in-depth Bible study. So when I was reading the scripture and I came across this verse, I felt that a lot of people have no idea what this verse means because from the top to the bottom, it, 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 it breaks churches in the denomination. So I wanted to, um, take advantage of the fact that i have audience and 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 teach this bible verse or better yet explain it you know what i'm saying and i'm going to explain it quickly and then spend the rest of the podcast just praying for families uh concerning specific needs that i believe that the holy spirit will let me pray amen so i'm just going to explain the verse and then when you understand it then i'm going to spend the rest of the podcast minute or the the time together praying amen um so it's a fascinating scripture in the book of first corinthians chapter 14 verse 34 and here we go it says women should be silent during the church meetings it is not proper for them to speak they should be submissive just as the law says women should be silent during the church meetings it is not proper for them to speak they should be submissive just as the law says amen all right so um i'm trying to i'm going to um explain it very fast because it's easy once you know in the scripture so on the on on the face taking it right away after you you listen to it you will think that that's what the bible is saying right and some even heavy theologians still think that's what the bible is saying the first thing i want you to know is that paul is writing uh let's enjoy it first before i explain it uh, um so um first rule of biblical interpretation is Baumis contest in other words you have to know what you're talking about you know what i'm saying because 
if I go to a mental hospital and I say that he is mad, that mad is real mad. But if I'm home and I'm saying I'm mad, that means that I'm upset. So the same word mad means differently depending on the context with which you are saying it, right? Right, so the first level of biblical interpretation is I let the context explain the verse. You understand? So if Jesus is talking about, I am the good shepherd, don't go use a shepherd story from David. Let that verse explain itself. Just because Jesus says he's a shepherd doesn't mean that he's a shepherd like David who was taking care of literal sheep. You understand that? So stay within that context and don't go use another verse from somewhere to kind of explain the verse that you're explaining. All right, so th- that is another rule. Let the context explain itself. The second thing about the rule is that let the the book that the 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 verse is in so let the the paragraph that the verse is in let it explain itself let the entire book that the verse is in let it explain itself so the, with that knowledge you understand that so if the book doesn't explain then go to the testament and then go to the the entire bible so there's levels of of zooming out to get a bigger picture right so this is a good way of studying the bible right so this verse if you interpret it in context okay let me say this okay the bible is not saying what this verse is saying so that you at least it will calm you down and, and you can listen so this is not the bible is not saying that women should not speak the bible is not saying that at all you understand it's not saying that at all and i'm going to show you in a minute all right so let me continue now so um so you go to the the, the context you go to the, the whole picture and then you use that to explain so when you use context and you use um what paul is saying to explain it you might miss it people do miss it the only way you can get this verse right is to do a little deeper study which is to go to the original manuscript and that is where you kind of find the answer all right so first thing first the entire church of corinth was a messed up church they were messed up as because they they were very arrogant and very uh bossy in terms of the way they approach church and the only reason was because they had a lot of spiritual gifts they were more like charismatic in them times they had a lot of gifts that were operating in the church the funny thing is that they also were the most immoral church uh, in town you understand they 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 were very powerful in terms of the gift things but at the same time they they were still messed up in terms of character right they look more like the charismatic church all right so they had a lot of string things that paul needed to straighten out so not to waste too much time this is a quote the verse you're reading is a quote it's a statement that the current church were using to control the women and paul was quoting that so in the original translation that that verse is in quotation marks so paul is saying that and you are said you are you are saying to yourselves that women should keep quiet blah 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 if you have the right english bible right after that verse there will be a big what with a question mark if you have a right bible so that means that paul is saying are you guys kidding me are you actually saying that in your churches are you hearing me so find even if you don't have it just go to bible hub and type this verse and you see about five translations that right after the bible says women should not speak and all of that the next verse is what a big what with a question mark so paul was like i couldn't believe my ears i'm hearing this in this church you understand that so it is a quotation it's a it's a it's a stupidity that was going on in the church of corinth and paul was like it's so after he said what he said that are you guys crazy what like you, did you think that god god comes to corinth church before he writes the bible like what paul the next verse paul says that or oh, do you think the bible was written by your church or something why are you having these strange authorities like you are the author of the bible so that was what paul was saying paul was very angry so in the original translation that statement is in the quotation and then the next verse says what 
did the word of God come from you guys? Why are you making these crazy statements? You understand that? So that is the meaning of the scripture. Another level of interpretation is that any verse that is not supported by other verses, you have to sit back and understand. Unfortunately, when um before uh, Sylvester killed the wife, there was a clip that Sylvester was in the church and because Sylvester, I don't know, maybe didn't have a proper Bible interpretation, he was trying to confuse the congregation by talking about there's a verse in the Bible that in one book it says that this king was eight years old. In another book it says the king was 18 years old. So the Bible is a mistake. As a teacher, as a Bible teacher, when I see those discrepancies, I get so excited. Because that means that there's a deeper revelation. You understand? Because if the Bible wanted to trick man it won't put conflicting if the bible was man-made it will make sure that there's no conflict inside because it's god breath everything in the bible is true so when you see one thing saying something different you have to be happy because that means that when you dig deep you're going to find some good some good news out of it so instead of thinking that the bible is not good you should be happy because there's something that is going to come out of it when you study it deeper you understand that so when you study this verse deeper you realize that the same paul cannot talk about what women should do in the church in the whole book in the same book of corinthians where he talks about uh, one woman can I and mean, when you are prophesying do this only so he addresses he and she he addresses the whole without gender or anything right so he will not come and say that women should not speak when in other verses and other chapters he has talked about the women should do that and the men should do that you understand that and so and lastly um anytime you read a scripture and you you see I, i really love people who are very obedient you know i love people who are very obedient you know but god brings teachers so that you will not be enslaved in terms of being obedient because there are some people they are afraid so i don't care whether you say it's a quotation or not the bible said women should not do this so we're not going to let them do that you know they will say that but anybody that has the holy spirit knows that this is not what the bible is saying amen so i wanted to share that with you so to summarize what i mean if you say if you read the whole book of corinthians it can interpret the verse if you read other parts of scripture it cannot interpret that verse that should tell you that that is not what the bible is saying but i don't need to go that far because i know from the original translation that it's a quotation mark and the next verse after that tells you that paul was actually annoying and was quoting what that crazy corinthians church were trying to do that's why he was shocked as soon as he he said that he in other words you know when you're talking to somebody and you you start saying what they said like um i should go out of the house because of this this what you know what i'm trying to say so basically he was quoting the craziness that the current church was doing and was telling them that are you kidding me are you serious like you you uh, uh, so in other words he was telling them that you guys talk like you guys talk as if um god need god kind of uh asks your opinion before he writes his bible amen so that's what really is about so i felt this monday i could just do a quick bible exposition like that for you all right let's pray i'm going to begin to pray for uh, families pray for mothers pray for fathers pray for children pray for those who will be going back to school some people will be going back to school my daughter for example will be going back to school physically tomorrow and i i want to begin to release a prayer over your monday over your house father in the name of jesus we are so grateful we thank you for the power that we have in prayer i lift up a prayer on behalf of everybody under the sound of my voice i begin praying for the men in on this platform some of them need a, a divine help some of them need jobs some of them need open doors i pray and i push in your direction opportunities i push into your direction upliftment i push into your direction favor and i bind the work of the enemy against your life in the name of jesus i pray for those who are sick on the platform one of my greatest daughter at juanita is not doing well i take authority and i use it as a point of contact and i lift up a prayer for everybody on this platform who is not doing well anybody and in the in the hospital may the spirit of god release healing for you right now in the name 
name of Jesus, I pray that the Holy Ghost will arrest every power that wants to dominate your body. In the name of Jesus, I pray for a lifting to come upon you. I pray for mothers for strength. I pray for daughters for strength. I pray for those who are still seeking, those who are in school, those who are struggling. Father, let help come. Let help come. In the name of Jesus, I lift up a prayer for those who are struggling in secret places. I pray that the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will give you victory. In the name of Jesus, I pray for those who financially can determine their left from their right may god help you may god support you in the name of jesus i pray for those who are also in a, a, a captive of any kind anything that begins to lay hold of you captive i pray in the name of jesus that be loose out of them all be loose out of them all be loose out of them all in the name of jesus and now i pray for any special need that that you will need this week. May God supply. May God sustain. May God restore. Now I pray for salvation for your husband. May your husband be born again. May your wife be born again. May your children be born again. In the name of Jesus, I pray for healing. I pray for healing. I pray for restoration. In the name of Jesus. Now I want to pray for those who are still battling with some corona stuff. May the healing of God come upon you. May the healing of God come upon you. In the name name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you that jobs are coming forth. I thank you that this week will be a great week. I thank you that your hand will rest upon us. We give you glory for the great things that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen.